Hello, I'm Stuart Goldsmith, and today I'm talking to Norman Lovett about how he writes his material. Although in Norman's case, maybe writes isn't the word. As usual, if you'd like to hear the full audio podcast of this conversation, you can download it from comedianscomedian.com. Here's Norman Lovett. That's the thing about having the notebooks. I have got a few, but I wish I'd kept them all because I often get people on Twitter saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I remember seeing you, you know, the, and you did that thing about the Kit Kat. Well, shock. that was, I think that was me that on was Twitter. That was you, yeah. yes. Because, <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you why. It was, it was. And yeah, I'll yeah, tell you why, because I, I, we, I was just mentioned before, we gigged together in Ryslip in uh, the bunker. The comedy, comedy club, bunker, the comedy bunker. yeah. And that, you were saying that must have been about six years ago because you're used to that. Did I do it? I didn't do it then. You, you didn't do the Kit Kat? No, no, no. No, I didn't but, have But backstage, I met you and was all excited. I was sort of, you know, Red Dwarf is the first programme I remember yeah. kind of crying, laughing at as a kid. So I was all excited to meet you. And I said, oh, I remember the last time I saw you, you did this joke about a Kit Kat. And you went, oh, remind me what the joke was. And yeah, I told I you what it was and then you wrote it down. And yeah. then I reminded you on... Uh, on, uh, on Twitter, Twitter, I sort of said as a little joke uh, about a week ago, I said, oh, I'm looking forward to talking about the Kit Kat joke. And you said, what was it again? And I sort of wrote it down <laughs> and said, oh, man. I'm going to do it again because it still applies, doesn't it? It's about walking along in the road. It's blokes mainly. You fall or trip. And some blokes, especially younger blokes, they always say, look round. I didn't fall down then. No, I was all right. What did, what did, what's your problem? I say, if I trip, I just go to the ground. I lie down there and I always carry a, a little two two biscuit Kit Kat <laughs> and, and I just sit down and have a snack <laughs> and get up in my own time and carry on with my journey that's, it. That, that's all it was but it, people loved it you know they liked it I, I, I'll bring it back <laughs> <laughs> I lo- I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the Big Bang Theory I, uh, mm-hmm. I think it's one of the best sitcoms I've ever seen in my life <laughs> and uh, my daughter say any, anyone that's been to Talk to me, and they say he didn't talk to you about it, he didn't keep talking about the Big Bang Theory, did he? You know, like that. <laughs> I do go on about it, I do bang on about it, <laughs> but <laughs> I, you know, and there are quite a few people I meet that are fans like me, and there are other people who just don't, doesn't work for them, you know, but I think it's fantastic. Sure. On, on the subject of sci fi, if we could talk about uh, Red Dwarf for a moment. Yeah, um, I don't mind talking about Red Dwarf. But, uh, I, well, something that struck me is that your your character as Holly on Red Dwarf seems so. I can't imagine anyone else playing it other than you. I mean, I know that someone later later did or play you know a different version of it. Well, there were two but, people. Hattie Hayridge did it, and yeah. then they did an American version where that woman, well known woman, played the part of the pilot. What was her? She was in Frasier, wasn't she? What's her? Oh name? yes, I, I never saw the American version. She's a well known act. She was well a big star in that in Frasier. The woman. In, do you know? Do you know her name? Jane Leaves, she did my part in that. And I was so pleased that it was shit. The whole, the <laughs> <laughs> no, not just me and Jane, for Jane Leaves. I was really pleased that the Red Dwarf pilot didn't work out because I thought, no, they'll never get it. They'll never, they'll never get the, the same that we had. Craig mm. Charles, a poet, you know, Danny John Jules, a dancer from the West End and a bit of a singer, you know, and Chris Barry, the impressionist, and yeah. me... A comedian. It was an incredible ensemble. It was an incre- incredible, and they could have gone for well-known people at the time, and they mm. didn't. I think that was one of the things that I think John Lloyd said something about that when they were casting. It was don't don't get well-known people, and mm. it's, it's really good that it worked out a treat. In, in terms of your your uh, performance in it, though, the character mm. of Holly seemed very similar to your stand-up. The the writers had seen my stand-up sure, comedy, okay. and, and okay. they knew. And, and all the characters in Red Dwarf, we spent a lot of time with the writers in rehearsal rooms, pubs, <laughs> mm-hmm. and things. And they got to know our real characters. Craig, he once said, he said, "I'm not a slob. I'm not a slob." Yeah. And one day at, in, in at dinner in the lunch thing at, at, at uh, wherever it was, it's the building's gone now, the mm-hmm. uh, rehearsal rooms at North Acton. Okay. He, w- he put out a cigarette in his dinner plate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not a slob, you know. <laughs> but did you, did you feel when you were, because you, you were working as a stand-up at the time. Yes. Did you feel that if you kind of gave your stand-up persona to the character of Holly on the TV show, did you feel you'd be kind of giving away too much of yourself? No, not really, because it was a voiceover at first, and the lines were just great. I mean, the audition piece I did was Everybody's Dead, Dave. <laughs> really? And as soon as I read it in the room to the writers and producer, <laughs> I knew that I knew they were going to laugh before they laughed because I knew it was right for the... 
if you audition for any, I don't know if anyone's done any auditions for anything, and you know there's something you know about. You say, oh yeah, this is this is I can do this. Sure, I can get this across. What, what do you think that quality is for you that that you could do that specific it's thing? Just, I don't know. It's just a deadpan. The voice is all right, I think. You know, and uh, just the way I do it. I don't <laughs> know. I just feel it. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, do you did you ever feel in your in your stand up that there was pressure from gigs or from the the circuit to be anything different to what you were to be punchier to be slicker you seem to be the opposite of a lot of yeah slick i got I've, i did have criticism from certain people but you just have to learn to ignore it really because you can i've seen comedians that were really odd you know weird especially in the alternative comedy early days there were lots of variety acts really funny variety acts and stuff and i've seen them sort of go on to do genres and stuff which i've done myself i've done a few genres and stuff mm -hmm. and i've i've done well at genres but i've also haven't done well mm. some audiences have gone oh what's this but i've seen some comedians completely come away from what they used to do and turn into a, just a, another another comedian really i don't want to be uh, another comedian i want to be me uh, as near to me perhaps unique i want to be unique i don't know whether i'll ever be unique but i mean i want to do what i want to do yeah mm. i'm I, a stubborn old kid I yeah know. well I, I think that i don't know i, I don't think know. that's really valid and i think that's that's i don't know it's exciting as a comedian and as a comedy fan to hear people talk in those kind of terms because there mm. is i think such a pressure to fit into some idea of what a comedian is yeah, I think Stuart Lee's very supportive. Um, he's been so supportive of people like myself and stuff. And he said, he said a thing about the TV people instantly think of young people. Uh, if someone's going to make young people laugh, they'd get Jack, the tall Whitehall. Whitehall. Yeah. Whereas Stuart said Norman Lovett can make a young audience laugh. Yes. You know, but they're not going to pick him. They're not um, probably. Eight, and there's age again, of course. Sure. And the, you know, with the three K definition. <laughs> definition you know the game i might look hideous on television you know who knows you don't know thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it subscribe to it or share it with someone else who's new to the show and don't forget if you'd like to hear the full audio podcast of our conversation you can download that from comedianscomedian.com see you next time